Here's something I've been uh, mentioning for a while now here. We're going on with the MIA. This is part five. Controlling and censoring all news. Dictators must also control and censor all news and other information reaching the public. That is why the Ministry of Information, Propaganda, was so important to the Nazi and Soviet regimes. And why immediately after the Nazis blew up the Reichstag, uh, which was the German Parliament building, they blamed their opposition and declared a police state and imposed total press and radio censorship. To control and manipulate the minds of the masses, a despot must control, limit, and manage all information flowing to the public, who must be deceived and kept totally in the dark as to the true state of affairs. We see bits and pieces of this now. In America, the political left has been in control of the mainline media for 50 years and until the advent of the internet had almost a total information or was it disinformation monopoly they controlled the major television networks the major news publications and the government Wall Street fed propaganda machine virtually all of them followed the same political left party line today media brainwashing of the masses is nowhere more clearly demonstrated than non-stop Wall Street propaganda that flows out of CNBC and similar Wall Street owned and orchestrated news networks. Are they effective? Well consider this, in 11 years gold rose over six-fold to the highest level in 6,000 years of recorded world history and silver rose 12-fold. During that time Wall Street and its wholly owned Shill Vision uh, gave uh, virtually no mention to the incredible rise in the metals. Is it any wonder that less than 1% of the American people have bought any gold or silver and that most do not have a clue that the biggest precious metals bull market in world history is underway? Or why? I.e. the collapse of the U.S. dollar. The media brainwashing has become incredibly successful in dumbing down the American people and getting them to do exactly what Wall Street, the Fed, the banks, and the establishment want them to do. There are holes in their information monopoly, i.e. Fox News, talk radio, newsletters such as this one, and others. But the biggest hole of all is the Internet, where an instant avalanche of information from thousands of sites and blogs is pro proliferating all over the U.S. and world. Every act of mendi mendici uh, emanating from Congress, the White House, the bureaucracy, the Fed, or the political left is instantly telegraphed all over the world in seconds via the Internet. Admittedly, however, only the thinking people, a tiny minority, even take note of these developments. But the Internet has definitely made it much more difficult for the political left to sneak their deeds through in the dark. And for that reason, at some point, the political left must find some way to close to close down or at least massively censor the internet in some future time of crisis, real or orchestrated. This is why the political left in Congress gave Obama last year the right to close down the internet in the U.S. at will for four months in some future crisis with no additional uh, approval from Congress. When it is switched back on, you can be sure that all the conservative, dissident, uh, dissenting uh, pro-constitution sites will be gone. Part 6. Controlling the movement of people. The Nazis and communists clearly restricted the movement of their people, preventing them from fleeing their area of control. They instituted internal passes, also a notable feature of the apartheid era in uh, South Africa, and checkpoints for internal control of their people's movements. The Nazis and Communists even set up an elaborate inter internal spying system, so if a stranger were seen in, the, in an area, he would be immediately reported to the authorities by neighbors or persons sympathetic to the party. Kind of reminds you of the programming of the American people in our day to report any suspicious activity, person, activity, behavior, package, or luggage to the nearest police or TSA authority. In Nazi Germany, or the former Soviet Union, if you tried to flee the company, country, you would be shot. 
Today, with the war on terrorism as an excuse, there are growing restrictions on Americans' freedom of movement. Police and military road checkpoints are a growing feature in the American scene, especially in the border states with Mexico. No-go zones in southern Arizona and other border states are now becoming commonplace. A no-fly list lists, uh, people of interest lists, and other non-desirable lists are now being compiled, whereby certain high-risk groups, it's not politically correct to say Middle Eastern Arab men, will not be allowed to board planes or other public transportation. But what happens when you make it on one of these lists because you are politically incorrect, are considered to be anti-government, or on one of their persons of interest lists. More and more paperwork, photo IDs, and background checks are now being required in order for you to be able to travel, not to mention the highly intrusive personal and bag searches we all must, we must all now undergo in order to have the privilege to fly in America. In some future terrorist crisis on American soil, it is not a stretch to think that many passports of U.S. citizens might be frozen, at least until they can prove that they are not a threat to the state. In mid-May, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee from Texas introduced H.R. 1900, legislation to give the TSA sweeping control over all U.S. ground transportation, including all train stations and train travel, and all bus terminals and bus travel. Auto travel will not be far behind. The power of Janet Napolitano's Transportation Safety Board is huge and growing. Imagine the massive surveillance, invasion of privacy, body scans, and personal belonging searches we all undergo at U.S. airports today, soon be expanded, being expanded to all U.S. ground travel. This writer believes that we are only one major terrorist attack in the U.S. away from massive travel movement restrictions on U.S. citizens. The, you, the noose is tightening. And if you remember back about a year ago, I was saying this, you know, when they were first starting with these body scanners and the pat-downs and all, you know, what is next? Bus stations? Subways? Think about it, folks. It's getting more and more intrusive by the day. Seven, gun control. The masses must be disarmed. The first thing the Nazis and the Communists did when they came to power was to seize all of the people's firearms so they could not fight back and stage a counter-revolution. It is difficult to control a well-armed people, as Colonel Gaddafi is presently discovering in Libya. The political left in America have long pushed for gun registration to be followed by gun confiscation, similar to what has occurred in Australia. The great majority of the people in the UK and Europe, except for Switzerland, where the people are well armed, do not own a firearm. Most have never even fired one. The same is true in most of Asia, the Middle East, and Latin America, where only the criminals, drug dealers, terrorists, police, and military have guns. The vast majority of people in the world cannot defend themselves, their homes, or family, and must depend on a government to protect them. This is what made it so easy for the Bolsheviks to take over Russia in 1917 and the Nazis in Germany in the 1930s. But herein the political left has a major problem in America. The American public is the best armed citizenry of the world. Indeed, in the history of the world, with well over 300 million, maybe even 400 million, firearms in their possession. Since our earliest history in written into our Constitution, owning and bearing firearms has been a freedom, a right, and a tradition. A tradition that has been reinforced over the past few years as Americans stamped, stampeded to buy over 100 million new firearms in the wake of Obama and the political left being swept into power. What's the message in that? Americans, well admittedly, maybe only half of the American people, will never voluntarily yield that right. They are determined to defend themselves, their homes, and their families against criminals, attackers, terrorists, or the government, and they know that their Constitution allows and encourages them to do so. The political left will have to find some huge pretext 
accompanied by a massive anti-gun media propaganda campaign in order to try to seize the American people's firearms, i.e. a major terrorist attack they could blame on the right wing, uh, a Reichstag uh, type event, or the assassination of a major political figure. But even then, trying to seize American firearms under some such pretext would not work because unlike Australia, the vast majority of Americans, i.e. over 90%, would not turn in the vast majority of their firearms i.e. over 90%. They would simply hide them. And if the political left pushes too hard to seize the people's arms, they, w that, yeah, they would trigger a civil war. That is how strongly Americans feel about their right to own and bear firearms and defend themselves. And that is the biggest problem the political left has in ever completely taking over and subjugating America. Conclusion so if you were the world dictator or wanted to attain that status, I believe you would move to consolidate your power in these seven major areas of people control, just as the U.S. and European global socialist leaders are now doing. Is this strangely stoppable? This writer does not know. But if you understand their long-term strategy, which is sadly over 99% of the people in the West do not, then consider it to be a giant chess game where you know your opponent's moves in advance and you make your own personal counter moves in advance as well. In the area of financial control, buy, store, or hide precious metals, some of them overseas and keep them at least several months or more of cash at home. Start to minimize your use of debit and credit cards. Uh, in the area of uh, medical health and medical control, learn alternate medicines on your own. I've got books in there. I'm learning. I'm not going to the doctors. In the area of food control, begin serious storage program. If you haven't started yet, you better start stocking up. Uh, get seeds so that you can grow your own gardens. Uh, preferably heirlooms. You don't want the Monsantos. Get heirlooms. Learn how to get your own seeds from your vegetables. Uh, doing the same things that we're trying to do is to find some land where we can homestead and if you're truly homesteading you don't have a lawn that you gotta mow. Every, spa every inch of space is used for something, for raising something, for uh, procuring food, whatnot, necessities, just something more you need to think about. Uh, uh, another good reference book is, uh, for those of you who don't look at it or don't know of it, Mother Earth News. They've been around since since I was a kid. But it's some very basic necessities that you can learn, you can do. It's good reference material. Anywho, uh, it goes on gun control, this, 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 bottom line, yeah, definitely we are losing our rights and our privileges. I will come back probably tomorrow with uh, the second half of the MIA, it will be called the American Plunge to a Police State, 10 Steps to Fascism people think about what's being said here. Just think about it. Peace out.